it was such an unexpected turn of events. You know, to, to misquote what Churchill said about democracy, it's a hell of a lot better than the other alternatives. It was the product of struggle, of, of dreams, of imagination, and intense collegiality and intelligence. The Constitution still is the glue that holds the South African society together. The preamble to our country's constitution reads, We, the people of South Africa, recognize the injustices of our past, honor those who suffered for justice and freedom in our land, respect those who have worked to build and develop our country, and believe that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, united in our diversity. But that wasn't always the case. The early 90s in South Africa was a period fraught with turmoil. The apartheid project had been crumbling for years, and it had become clear that maintaining the status quo was untenable. The National Party was in decline, and the far-right Conservative Party was threatening to unseat them and extend apartheid until it completely tore the country apart. International sanctions had stalled South Africa's economy almost to the point of standstill, and the townships faced near constant violence from the rival resistance factions operating within them. After more than 40 years of a pseudo-fascist racist system of governance, South Africa was now teetering on the brink of civil war. A civil war that would most likely be fought along the same racial lines upon which the National Party had built this despicable apartheid state. A civil war that would destroy whatever was left of the country and leave us with nothing left to rebuild it. It was evident to anyone with any sense that change was desperately needed. And then something miraculous happened. Under severe international and internal pressure, F.W. de Klerk and the liberal wing of the National Party agreed to change. At the turn of the decade, he unbanned the ANC and PAC, made moves to dismantle some of the old pillars of apartheid, and began to release the men and women his party had for so long deemed a political threat to the apartheid state. He called on all parts of South Africa to come together to negotiate a new constitution and a universally democratic system of governance that would peacefully take the place of apartheid. He was joined in this quest by another singular figure in South African history, a hero we are all deeply familiar with on whose legacy the new South Africa has been built. Nelson Mandela, Madiba. Together, these two men managed to offer this country something that had been in short supply for decades, hope. Thus, the stage was set and the country was given a chance to change. If we could come together, put aside our differences and agree on what was best for all South Africans, we may just avoid calamity. So the trumpet was sounded and many of our best and brightest political and legal minds heeded the call. They were the representatives of almost all of the diverse parts of this great nation. And they all shared in the dream that our country may become a place that respects the rights of all of its citizens, regardless of race, class, gender, and all of the other surface level traits that the National Party had insisted were vital to our identity. They came together so that we as a country may begin to wash the blood of history off our hands by building a better future for all living South Africans and for all South Africans to come. However, this was not going to be an easy task. It would take a period of almost four years to be realized. The first set of negotiations would fail due to the clashing visions of the NP and ANC. The country would see a period of increasing violence, a plot to kidnap the delegates to stop the negotiations, the assassination of Chris Harney, and an invasion of the negotiation center by the Avia Beer, 
to name but a few of the pressures faced by the delegates. Yet, despite all of this, they succeeded in their task and we are all the better for it today. It is because of their heroic work that I and my generation are called the Born Frees. Think about that. Born free. Born free from the apartheid state. Born free from state-encouraged and state-enforced racism. Born free from a system that artificially divided us and limited who we could be. We are born free to be unique individuals in the democratic South Africa. We are the children of liberation and the constitution is its legacy. Yet, we know so little about its creation and much less about the people who wrote it. Our school history education gives us only the most surface level understanding of the events that unfolded and what was at stake when it was being written. We are unaware of its contents and are not encouraged to understand it. And so when the government tramples all over our rights, we sit back and let them even though there is already a document purpose-built to hold that self-same government to account, I think it is time for this situation to change. And so I am trying to understand some of the individual stories of the brave men and women who wrote the document, to piece together the story of this incredible document through the histories of those who wrote it. It will necessarily be an incomplete endeavor, but I believe it is a start. It is about time we found something to unite us, and I can think of nothing better than the vision of the future our world-class constitution offers us. It was the product of struggle. It was the realization of so many dreams. And the story of its creation can show us all the power of hope in a time where hope is once again in short supply. So come with me on a journey through the lives of some of those who were there and take a look at some of the individual contributions that created our constitution. I hope that I can offer you a glimpse into the rooms where it happened and that by reliving that period of history we may take pride in the outcome, united in our diversity.